Good evening, G3 Student Ministry. So excited to be back with you again this evening. Just a couple of announcements for you. First off, um, Snowbird is still on, so if you could um, go online and if you're uh, to sign up, that will be so awesome. If you need any help with that process, just let me know. Again, we're, you know, if you're not, if you get, if you don't feel comfortable with going, that's okay too. We don't, we're not forcing you or man, um, making you go. You know, if you, if you feel comfortable and still want to go, we are still doing that. So if you need any help with that whatsoever, just let me know. Also, again, um, we're can still doing our drive-in services on Sunday. So uh, just come on out and join us in worship. It's a lot of fun. Roll up in your car, you know, praise God together, and then, then we, you can drive right on out. So we've been really enjoying that, so um, come on out for that. You know, we are entering right now the, I guess, the, the time of us uh, where everyone is on, on the lake, and I love being on the lake, and you know, Smith Mountain Lake, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's like a tourist location, everyone comes out on boats and stuff, and um, you know, for me, you know, when I was younger, my grandmother had a lake house, and we used to go out on the boat, and we just like spend all of our, day, our lake days out driving around. But I remember one time, you know, uh, we were out on the boat and a storm was coming. And if you've ever been on any kind of body of water when a storm comes, it like, it, it feels like you cannot see anything that's around you. The rain pours down, it's scary. And the first thing you do is you're driving back to the dock to where you are safe, you know, where, you, where you're not in the middle of the storm, the storm on the lake. So you're trying to book it back to the dock where it's safe. And you know, when believers are afraid, you know, they can f- run to a refuge or a fortress, which is God Himself. You know, God's people dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, no place could be safer than there. You know, believers can trust that God will protect them in times of fear. You know, this does not imply that God's people will never suffer or face time of difficulty, but it does promise that they do not need to be afraid, for they are in God's hands. So if you have your Bibles today, we will be in Psalm chapter 91. Before getting started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for being our fortress, a place where we can run to and hide, a place where you protect us. God, I just pray that you just to speak these words uh, to our students tonight, God. Let your word be said and not mine. God, just thank you for giving us a place where we could run to. Lord, give us peace in this time that we're in, and I just pray that we can meet back together soon as the body of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So here we go, guys, starting on verse 1 through Four. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the uh, perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wing you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler you know the names of god in these verses encourage us to trust him you know he is the most high that means he is higher than any king on earth any president any ruler he is higher than any false god of the nations you know he is the most high you know there is no one higher than god you know he is also the almighty that means that he is all, the all sufficient God for any situation. You know, any situation in, you know, he is there for you. He knows how to work through it. You know, he is Lord Jehovah, the covenant making God who is faithful to his promises. You know, he is God, the most powerful God, the, the, the powerful God whose greatness and glory surpass anything that we can imagine. This is the God who invites us to fellowship with Him. You know, this hidden life of worship and communion with Him makes possible the public life of obedience and service. You know, God shelters us, but also gives us the armor that we need to face this life. You know, His truth and faithfulness protect us as we proclaim His promises and obey Him. The shield that He provides is a large shield that covers not just certain areas, but covers the entire body. Those who abide in the Lord are safe 
when they are doing His will. Verse 5, it picks up, it says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Verse 10. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample under foot. You know, when we practice the hidden life, you know, we are not alone. When we are seeking refuge, God is there with us. You know, it said in verse 7 and 8, it says, A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. You know, these verses read like the description of a battle and may have a direct relationship to the covenant promises that God made with Israel. With their own eyes, Israel saw the grief of the Egyptians. Back when they were uh, um, in slavery in uh, in Egypt, you know, uh, they saw the suffering of the Egyptians. They saw when their firstborns were killed during that Passover night. You know, when they went out and they walked through the Red Sea, when they, when they were free, when they were in the wilderness and they looked back at the army that was coming through, they saw the Egyptian army crushed by the waves and they saw them dead on the shore of the Red Sea. But yet all of this happened, yet no harm came to the people of Israel. You know, God's angels went before them to prepare a way, to lead the way, you know, to lead a way for them. You know, and Satan quoted part of this verse, 11 and 12, when he was tempting Jesus in the wilderness. It says, For he shall give his angels charge of you to keep in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against them. You know, Satan was talking to Jesus. He was saying, you know, if you threw yourself off this temple, you know, God says he will protect you, that no harm will come to you, so why don't you do it? And Jesus responded from Deuteronomy 6.16. It says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God as you. You know, if the Father had commanded Jesus to jump from the, that temp, the temple that he was on, then the angels would have cared for Jesus. You know, no harm would have come. But to jump without the Father's command would have been um, presumption and not faith. And that would have been tempting the Father. You know, in Scripture, you see Satan referenced to being a lion or a serpent, or earlier it says a lion and a cobra. You know, in ancient uh, Eastern times, both of these were very dangerous enemies. You know, uh, back then people traveled by foot. They walked uh, many paths to get one place to another. And for travelers that were walking along the narrow path, they had to be cautious for Uh, lions and serpents that would attack them. And for the believer, guys, we need to be cautious where we go because the enemy is ready to attack. We can't walk and pretend and be oblivious and pretend like nothing will ever happen. We need to be cautious and aware that the enemy is out there, but we need to make sure we are walking close to God who will protect us from the enemy. You know, in verse 14 through 16, it says, Because he... Because he, has, uh, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I shall satisfy him and show him my salvation. You know, the Lord spoke and announced that he would do uh, for those of his people who truly loved him. And when it speaks of love, when it said earlier in um, verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, you know, um, 
you know, the word, the word love means to cling, to cleave, to be passionate about. And, you know, you know, yeah, you know, we are to cling to God. We are to cling to Him in those times. You know, we need to live a life that is obedient to Him and that acknowledges Him. You know, and when we do that, we receive his blessings, but also we will receive deliverance and protection. The salvation that is mentioned at the end of the psalm may mean help and deliverance during life. To the Jewish people, you know, they wanted full years. They wanted a full life, which means a fulfilled life. And when we live a life for God, when we are obedient to God, when we seek Him out, when He is our refuge, our fortress, when we are living that life of worship and communion in private, you know, He will use us uh, as a servant and out in public. When we are living that life for God, God adds to our life years and makes it worthwhile. So guys, just remember that when we go through life, you know, rely on God. When, when hard times come, it's so easy to blame God and turn your back on Him. But no, when those storms come, when those hard times come, seek Him out for your refuge and He, uh, and he will be your fortress. Like I said earlier, you know, there will be times of suffering and difficult times for us. But guess what? We do not have to be afraid for we are in the hands of of God. Guys, I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next week. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word being said. God, I just pray for our student ministry. Right now, Lord, I just pray that we'll be able to meet back soon and we'll be able to worship with you again and just be able to have a great summer together. But God, you know, whatever you bring, we we will go through. So Lord, just, uh, just let us this time seek you out. Let you be our fortress and our refuge, Lord. Thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guys, we'll see you next week.